Hey guys, Carl Cooper here with OnTheBlack.com. So as most of you know by now, the Mets yesterday traded for Gary Matthews Jr., uh, sending Brian Stokes to the Angels. In return, they got Matthews Jr., and uh, the Angels are also p paying uh, the majority of his contract too, so that's good. I think out of the $24 million he has left over the next two years, it's been reported I think the Mets may be paying something like $2 million of that, and the Angels are picking up the, the remaining $22 million. So that's good from a financial standpoint. The Mets aren't burdened with, uh, with his contract. And so in, in, in thinking about this deal and, and looking at it a little bit deeper, uh, my interpretation of this is, is a couple of things. Well, you know, first, I'm not going to uh, praise the Mets for this deal and I'm not going to kill them either. I think that this might be more of a, of a wait and see type of, of, of a deal. Um, for example, if, if he comes in and he wins the, the center field job in spring training and he fills in and he's a, a, for Beltran until Beltran returns and he's effective. And then as the season goes on, you know, they can utilize him as a fourth or fifth outfielder and everything works out well, then that's one thing. But if he comes into spring training and let's say he has a terrible spring training and maybe doesn't even win the center field job coming out of spring training or performs horribly. And then on the other end, let's say Brian Stokes is pitching really well for the Angels. Then, you know, I think we can look at that and say that maybe it was a bad deal looking back on it. So I think that this is more of a wait and see type of, of deal. Um, a few things that come to mind when thinking about this deal, though. One, um, you know, it creates competition in center field. The Mets aren't just going to give Angel Pagan the center field job until Beltran comes back. They're going to push him and they're going to make him uh, work for it and compete for that position, which I think is a good thing because in the long run, I think that this competition might make Angel Pagan a better player. And I'm not necessarily talking about from a, a physical tool standpoint. I'm talking about more mentally. Uh, Pagan is a talented player. Uh, he can play the game of baseball, but as we saw last year on a number of occasions, he made bonehead plays either in the field or running the bases or at the plate. So maybe this will help him focus more and, and uh, you know, the competition might be good for Angel Pagan in the long run. We'll see. I think what, you know, we can also kind of come out of this deal and assume is that Fernando Martinez probably won't be on the major league roster after they break spring training unless there's some other injuries uh, or something like that. You know, when the Mets uh, signed Jason Bay, they were pretty much set in their outfield with Bay, Beltran, and Frank Cor and Pagan looking at him as the fourth outfielder. After Beltran got injured, a lot of us thought, okay, maybe this will create competition between Fernando Martinez and Pagan for the center field spot. But I guess that's a little bit different from what the Mets are thinking. It looks like the competition now will be between Matthews Jr. and Pagan. And, and F Mart might be the, the odd guy out, might be sent down to the minors. And I think that that's a good thing. Uh, last year when he was up here, he did show some signs of being a good player. But he also showed, for the most part, in my opinion, that he was a little overmatched and needs a little bit more seasoning. So maybe this kind of takes some of the pressure off of Fernando Martinez. And maybe he could spend some time in the minor leagues and that will make him a better player uh, overall in the long run as well. Um, I think one more thing coming out of, of the Matthews Jr. deal that I'm looking at, and I've said this before, that I'm wondering if Carlos Beltran might be out longer than we've either led to believe at this point or longer than it's expected. And Matthews Jr. is, even though he's not on the level of a Carlos Beltran, is somewhat of, of insurance here just in case Beltran is out longer than expected. I hope that's not the case, but we'll see. So I would love to hear your comments, guys, on this uh, video post and also your thoughts on the Gary Matthews Jr. trade. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon.